new body cam video shows cops finding kids locked in a dog crate in a Las Vegas home, and that is just the tip of the horrifying iceberg. A quick warning, this story is extremely upsetting. It all started when this woman called 911 back in June while at Walgreens. Why is he going to come after you? He told me he was going to kill me today. He already beat the kids up, and I'm terrified. He's beating the, your child up? The kids at the apartment. When cops showed up at the apartment, they found six kids, two of whom were locked in a small dog crate. And one of those kids was so badly beaten, they were taken to the hospital in critical condition. The cops say the dad confessed to beating all of the kids except for the two-year-old baby. He also allowed some of the kids to abuse another child. He was arrested for child abuse and attempted murder. The woman was arrested for child neglect. However, she says she was also abused for years. Man, that is crazy. How can you do that to your own kids? I don't understand people like that. Like, how could you look at yourself every day and say, damn, I'll beat the fuck out of my kids. But you know what? They shouldn't have been crying. They a kid, or they shouldn't have fucked this up. They a kid. Put them in time out. You know they show up because this is a part of you, part of your genes. So what you don't like, it must be something about yourself reflecting off you into your kids. And you know what I'm saying? So, man, I can't believe it. I just hope the right thing is get done to him and those kids is in proper love and care. Now I want to emergency. Hi, um, we were just gonna call to let you know our friend is missing. I see you want to make a uh, missing person report. Yeah, it hasn't been like 24 hours or anything, but if we could go ahead and do that, like that'd be really nice. Yeah, it don't have to be 24 hours if we report anybody missing. Oh, I don't know why I thought that. Oh no. Okay, yeah. Um, what's that? Where, where are you located? Um, we went out in Five Points last night, and she still hasn't made it home. Her phone's dead. Um, we don't think she, like, went home with, like, a guy or anything. Like, we're, like, actually, like, worried. So, she missed work this morning. All right. What, what is your apartment number? 901. All right, what is her name? Samantha Josephson. She is like scamming. Samantha, what's her last name? Josephson. J-O-S-E-P-H-S-O-N. And how old is she? 21. She white, black, Hispanic? She's white with really dark hair. She's Jewish. Do you know her, um, do you know her date of birth? Um, August, someday in August, <laughs> August 13th. And hey, you remember what she was wearing? She was wearing a bright orange shirt with black pants. So we got a bright orange shirt and black pants. Yes. And how was her hair? Um, it was straight. It was down at the time. It's about shorter length, maybe a little longer. And y'all was at five points, you said? Last seen at five points? Yes. Okay, and what is your name? All right, we got it. So we're going to send the officer out there so y'all can make that report, okay? Okay, thank you so much for the help. You're welcome, no problem. What? All right, bye -bye. Samantha Josephson was getting ready for her last year of law school. She was living with her boyfriend in Pennsylvania, going to parties and having the greatest time of her life. Samantha was going to be a lawyer her parents would be proud of. She spoke with her dad almost daily, and he told her how proud he was to be her father. It seemed like nothing could go wrong, until everything did. It was a beautiful night, and Samantha and her friends decided to enjoy the evening at the Five Points District in downtown Columbia. After a night of drinks and laughter, Samantha decided it was time to go home. She checked her mobile phone. It was 2 a.m., figuring it was safest to Uber. At exactly 2.09 a.m., Samantha stood now, This is crazy. Just for the simple fact, you're doing the right thing. And, like, how do you even know? I don't do public transportation. I try not to. Um, but anyway, how do you know the difference from a real Uber to a fake Uber? Samantha stood outside the bird dog bar waiting for her Uber to pull up. 
Almost immediately, a black Chevrolet pulled up beside her and Samantha got in. Everything seemed normal according to plan until she realized two things. One, this was not her Uber driver, and two, the driver, Nathaniel Rowland, had activated the child locks in the car, trapping Samantha inside. As Rowland turned his head to face Samantha, she immediately knew something was wrong. The next day, Samantha's roommates become worried. It had been more than a half day since they had seen or heard from her. Her cell phone was no longer going through, and her boyfriend knew nothing about her disappearance. Worried that something had gone wrong, the police were called and a search began. Unfortunately, just 14 hours after her disappearance, turkey hunters found her body in a field in Clarendon County. The big question was immediately posed. What had happened between 2 a.m. and 4 p.m. on the same day? How had a wrong Uber car led to the death of this young and promising lawyer? It happened that Samantha had not checked the car's license plate or even had the driver say her name, and as soon as she entered the vehicle, the driver locked her in by activating the child's locks. This way, no matter how hard Samantha tried, she could not get the door open. Seeing that he had gained control over her, Rowland then stabbed Samantha. With a two-handed knife, he went on to stab the 21-year-old over 120 times in several parts of her body. Despite how much blood she had lost, Samantha refused to give up. Instead, she fought against Rowland with all her strength. One of the strikes went through her right hand. But Rowland was also not giving up. He struggled with Samantha, stabbing her so severely in her head that one of the strikes went through her skull. After that, he stabbed her in the face, shoulder, leg, lung, feet, back, torso, and neck until she died in his car. According to authorities, it happened in less than 10 to 20 minutes. Later. Like I said earlier, you trying to do the right thing, you out drinking, partying with people. Man, she was by herself though, and this slime scumbag. You know what I'm saying? Like, your agenda was to harm and hurt people. So you was already on some other type of times. Later on, the pathologist who conducted an autopsy on Samantha's body would admit that she couldn't have survived as the extent of her blood loss was unimaginable. Rowland was arrested on charges of murder and kidnapping. At the time of his arrest, the 24-year-old had been in possession of marijuana and had failed to stop on police command. The timeline of events was laid out in court. Days before Samantha's death, her boyfriend, Greg Corbishley, said she was quite upset about a family member being sick. He assured her everything would be fine and urged her to enjoy herself. During the trial, video evidence would later show that someone tried to use Samantha's debit card several times and tried to sell Samantha's phone. Additionally, video evidence will later show that this person was Rowland. A friend of Rowland's testified that he had seen blood in the accused's car the next morning while bloody clothes and cleaning products were found behind the friend's house. It appeared that Rowland had attempted to implicate his friend in the crime. The judge eventually sentenced him to life in prison, and according to South Carolina law, a person convicted of murder is not eligible for parole. Man, I know he gotta feel messed up. Urging you to go out, have a good time, because you know law school, college in general is a lot. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, go out on wine, have fun, you know, get your head right. And then this slime scumbag agenda was to harm the first person he could. So I hope he gets 75 years, no parole time because you took a life.